first first question, Ray, is like you've been working on the online academy for uh, a little bit longer than most of the guys in there. And, uh, you know, from maybe I, I don't exactly know your lesson history, like coming from in-person lessons uh, versus online. You know, what, what's been your experience with online and, and you know, what wh why do you maybe like it more? Yeah, so let's if we take it back, I'd say. I used to, well, like I'm a weekend golfer, as I mentioned uh, earlier, but I used to do the in-persons, which were great. Like I would, you know, sign up for multiple lessons with various coaches um, and we'd go, you know, go through it. It's, it's more of the time commitment to, to actually being able to carve out a regular schedule and seeing them on a regular, mm -hmm. like having to find my own way, like, obviously get to the range or get to our practice facility uh, in regular intervals was kind of tricky for me at the time. Like I'm a father, I have two kids at home, I uh, have the day job. So it's, it's always tricky to find that time. Um, so yeah, like the, they were good, like on uh, in person rather was really good for what it gave me, but I just couldn't practice consistently Mm -hmm. Um, as soon as I started or I purchased a bunch of equipment for at home, including a practice net, uh, and then just the prevalence of, uh, of simulators in the area now, like I decided to give it a shot, try the online, uh, lessons with yourself and your brother. And, uh, yeah, like it, it definitely helped because I had the opportunity to hit more, you know, just put more reps, um, definitely. drill throughout Throughout the year, like even in the winter time, get the opportunity to swing a couple and hit a couple balls, and uh, it yeah, it just really kept me focused throughout the entire year rather than just intermittently. So that that's mainly that's mainly it. Yeah, and I you know I think the like I do you know just as many in person lessons as I do online lessons, and I think what I've seen and uh, you know especially from you working with you is that you get that consistency, where you get that relationship with a coach where you know, on the in-person it's, you know, here's your hour, best of luck in two weeks, three weeks from now, you know, hopefully you're making those changes. Right. And I felt that with a lot of my clients where like you could get a lesson back on a Monday and then, you know, let's say Tuesday and Wednesday, I say this all the time, but it's true. Like you, you can go Tuesday and Wednesday and practice and hit me up in our, in our little chat and say, Hey Cam, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I need to change. Or you can send me those little progress reports. So I actually know that, you know, Ray on the back end is actually making the improvement because you know, at the end of the day, like the lesson, the lessons that I give you, it's the con is I give you the concept and then it's up to you and go and figure to go and figure out how to get your light bulb moment from that concept that where it actually clicks and then you can see the improvement. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I found that to be super helpful. Just being able to send you, you know, just little gut checks here and there. Like, am I doing this right? Am I drilling right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then you'll, you'll send back a quick, quick note that, you know, something's working or, you know what, let's like stop doing this particular thing. Let's pivot to a different drill or something. Uh, so that, that can constant feedback and uh, adjustments on the fly kind of thing is, uh, has been really helpful for sure. For sure. And I, and I think you've done it right too. Like you have your little home set up so you can, like, you know, you're a busy guy with two kids. It's just what we were saying before, like you're in the category of people who play the least, right. Just because of life yeah. circumstance, like working a busy job, raising a family, but you, you know, you set it up well where you could get those 10 minutes in 20 minutes a day and groove what we talked about. So, you know, right now it's not really a time for you for high performance in terms of your scorecard, but it's more of like a building phase that you're going through, which, you know, I've, I've definitely seen you make those swing changes. Right. Um, so just kind of, um, you know, to, to go back to the start, like what, what drew you to working with me and, or I guess Chris, not my uh, brother to start, uh, in, in terms of the online stuff. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I think we started probably maybe just over a year ago or roughly a year ago. Yeah, but I think that. Yeah. That time, like, for sure. Like, I'm always on social media, whatever. And you, you always see all the coaches pushing their their services. And, um, you know, some of them resonate, others not so much. But uh, you could definitely see the, it seemed like the industry was shifting towards that. And I could start to see some of the benefits of it as well. So I'm not sure if it was Chris or myself. I'm not sure who reached out to who, but we had a conversation um, and we talked about it. And I, you know, I was in the 
the the time when I was starting to actually consider, you know, in-person lessons again or try something new. So it kind of just gave me that extra push to just, you know, give it a shot, see how it goes, like try it for a month. And if it works, it works. It doesn't, then we'll reassess. But yeah, things have been good. Um, working with Chris early on and then yourself shortly after um, it was an easy transition. Again, like, as you mentioned with the home setup, uh, made things super easy and uh, could see the progress pretty quickly. And my for sure, mm -hmm. and I've seen your so I, you know I've seen your swing change right, and that's the cool thing is that uh, you came in with some you know kind of issues in your swing that you you I think you're frustrated with, and you know we've made small little pivots along the way, but I think you know so I was actually looking at one of your swings from uh, when you started to now, and you can definitely see a clear difference. Right? I don't know if you feel it, but I definitely see it, which is cool. Yeah, and uh, I think it lends itself to you know, you playing better down the line. Like it's important, I think, for every golfer to go through a year or two or three years uh, to just really deep dive on the technical side of their game. And, you know, you, you in a way you're sacrificing two to three years of your golfing career to have another good 30, 40, 50 years of playing, right? And you've definitely embraced that, right? Because it's, you know, it's not for everyone. Like, you know, making those changes, it takes guts to, to say, hey, I want to play better. Like I always say there's two ways to enjoy the game. You either get better, uh, you get better with your swing or you just drink and enjoy it and don't care about score. Right. But you're definitely in the first category. Um, so I guess early on, like what clicked about uh, the working relationship with Lancaster golf and um, you know, what did you struggle with coming in as well? Yeah. Um, so in terms of struggling, in terms of like my swing, you mean? Yeah. Or... Struggling with the swing. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I know it's cliche to say, but inconsistency, obviously mm -hmm. like, uh, I mean, I know not just inconsistency with strikes, but just recognizing that my swing was not, and it doesn't obviously doesn't have to be picture perfect, but knowing that there are some like clear swing flaws mm -hmm. uh, was one of the things that like I recognize, but also uh, you were both able to pick up pretty quickly on areas of how to improve it. Um, Cause it, it was something that I was struggling with and couldn't figure out what the fix was. And um, I, I think what really clicked was that you were able to uh, provide a few quick drills that got me significantly closer to where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And um, that just uh, really resonated with, with me and uh, just really helped helped me progress a lot quicker than I was really anticipating for sure. Awesome. I love to hear it. Yeah. And I think the drills was important for you, right? Just having a new pathway to a better swing, you know, just building that more positive motor pattern for you was big, right? Because it's, it's one thing to know, you know, what's going wrong in your swing. But it's another thing to know, like, okay, here's the pathway to actually fixing it. Right. Because, you know, you can have an idea of what's going wrong. And most golfers know what's going wrong in their swing, but the, the, you know, the hard part is actually fixing it. And there's many, you know, we could probably do like to, for instance, like you came in with a kind of across the top move. There's four or five different ways we could fix that. Right. And it's a lot of it is about finding the right one. And to be honest, like, I don't think the first one we we went through was the one we settled on. And that's just the reality of, of making those swing changes. There's, that's why I enjoyed working with you. Cause there's that little bit of give and take of, um, you know, exper in, in a way experimentation, right? Like it should be up the, the upfront 5% of, of the lessons should be, okay, let's try a few pieces. And then what are the pieces that actually stick for you? Right. Um, so other aspects of the mentorship, like there's, you know, there's definitely, I've, I've added more since you started, like with the resources and um, you know, the, the group chat tutorials uh, you know, the practice plans, like talk to me, what do you like about that? The, the stuff outside of the swing. Uh, yeah. The swing stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I've evolved with you and you use different platforms in the past as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think that you're the new, um, the new platform you're on, uh, is helpful that you have the biometric scanner, um, mm -hmm. software that you use. And I think that's, uh, that, you know, it's really helpful to see, and you can clearly show body movements in certain manners that need to be fixed. And, uh, you know, I'm a very visual person, so I like seeing that kind of stuff. Uh, and then just are like the group chat features that you have with the rest of your online academy uh i find that very useful too you know it just brings about 
you know, some open conversation amongst the members and, you know, you're, you're very responsive and quick to address any questions that people have. Um, and, and yeah, and then the regular tutorials that you put out, uh, I feel like they're daily now. <laughs> yeah, I said weekly, but I'm. It, yeah, it's funny. But, the more, the more but I you get, know, I'm not. I'm not complaining. Fired. I'm definitely not complaining because every <laughs> yeah. bit of information that um, I consume, like I can, I can work into my game. So, cool. I love that. Lots of benefits for sure. Nice. So, so for people wondering, the tutorials is something that when you're a part of the group chat, I'll, I'll, you know, kind of conduct a tutorial, and it's um. It, it can be kind of any topic. And a lot of the topics now come from the problems that I see that someone has in a lesson, right? Like someone asked me, you know, they're really struggling with a three wood. So, okay, why not do a deep dive on how to hit a three wood, right? So it mm -hmm. it's definitely brought a lot of, um, I, I think what it's it's taught me and it's taught a lot of people in the membership is that golf is not just the technical fix, right? Like it, it's one really small piece of the puzzle. Now it's a big, important piece of the puzzle, but there's all these other things that are the glue that hold your game together, right? And Golf is very much like mixed martial arts where there's all these different disciplines that have to come together for you to become a complete player. And, you know, it's the putting, chipping, mental game, course management, swing, practice habits. You know, there's probably even more subcategories you could go into, right? So, um, you know, uh, you kind of paint the picture for me. Like, we've already talked about it a little bit, but you're a busy guy working, you know, pretty busy job. How, how have you been able to carve out the time to to take my advice and then and, and see those improvements? Yeah, I mean it's the it's the difference of having to make my way to a, a range or a golf course and practicing in person or in meeting up with a coach versus um having that home set up uh and then just shooting a couple videos. Like it could even be ten minutes or fifteen minutes a day, but mm -hmm. it's so much easier to be able to do that. Uh and yeah, I mean that that speaks to having you know, a home setup when you can have something, uh, mm -hmm. but also being able to just videotape on the fly and then yeah. just send something over to you um, and having you take a quick look at it and shoot me back a note on what your thoughts are uh, and has really made the main difference in terms of um, being able to fit time amongst my busy schedule for sure. Love it, Ray. Yeah. And I, th I think that's been the cool thing with the members is like, and you spent, I, I've, I'm sure you felt this where like you're seeing your swing way more than you ever have. Like sometimes when you take in-person lessons and I'm guilty of this too, like you don't show the swing to your client that they're dealing with. Right. So they don't, they don't really get to match the feel versus the real. Right. And you know, you're lucky in a sense where you have that home set up. I've even, I remember I had a lady a few years ago uh, and she was in North Dakota, couldn't really get to a simulator and she just took, you know, swings with a half club in her, in her, in her room. I have another guy in New York city who, you know, lives in a small apartment. He just hits foam balls into a, a mattress. Right. So it's, you yeah. know, and to me, that's some, almost the more, um, I'd be curious to ask you in this. And if you, if you don't see the difference, then, then, you know, don't, don't worry at all. But mm -hmm. I find when you're working on technique, it's almost better to work onto it into a net because you don't get that. You're not so worried about ball flight. You can get more creative with the movements. So have you, have you felt yeah. that? Um, I do. There's less distraction, but I think what I found is that over time, and I don't know if this is a function of just my own familiarity with my swing probably is, is that like, even if I'm not hitting and watch seeing ball flight, I know where I have a much better sense of like where I'm hitting the ball on the club mm -hmm. face and what I anticipate is probably happening in like for a full launch. Like, yeah. I could you like, oh yeah, this this was probably a pull hook. Like I can I can just sense certain things when I'm hitting off the face, if that makes sense. Totally. Yeah. I, I mean I get that. Like I'm always one thing I noticed from me myself, my own game, filming myself so much into a net is I started I would watch myself after I hit the shot and I immediately looked down at my club face and see what happened, right? And I'm, yeah. I'm kind of, you know, having that little uh sort of feedback mechanism. And the more and more you fine tune that, you start to realize you're, you're seeing it show up in the simulator, right? And that's that's what I like about what you do. Like you do occasionally get to the sim and take some swings so you can kind of, you know, make the link to the to the, uh, the technical practice you're doing into the net. So, yeah, I definitely think it's great. Like you, you, you're you more, you're definitely more fine tuned to, um, you know, to what you're doing. And, you know, just with where we're at in the world, like there's no sense in, you know, we only have a seven to eight month window to play. So you might as well keep it going through the winter and see those improvements. Right. 
Yeah, exactly. And it's just so easy to just, now every time I go to the net, it's like second nature to just put on my phone and start filming. Like, Beauty. I love it, man. you know, right? <laughs> That's great. Uh, so I guess this kind of leads into my next question. Um, like your misawareness, we kind of talked about it. Like, do you think that's improved since starting? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, yeah, re recognizing where, if I'm hitting the ball off, if I'm off for whatever reason, I have a really good sense of why, or at least where on the club face it, uh, my miss hit was and why I'm doing it. And like, it, it allows me to just love, kind of reset and, and really put into perspective, like, all the drills that I had done in the past with you, like it gives me an opportunity to just look back at those and be like, okay, this one really worked well. So I should just uh, default back to this drill and just focus on that again. And yeah, yeah I find that helps a lot for sure. That's awesome. And I, I think you said something really important there and, and that's the reset, right? Is like, you know, every, every golfer, no matter what, if you're taking a thousand lessons, uh, you know, if you're seeing the progress, you always need a point to where you can, you're going to hit it like shit <laughs> and you need that little sense of reset to, to kind of get back to, you know, what, what feels right. And, you know, the more and more you have that little, the reset, but you actually have the right technical knowledge to go along with it, then it, um, you know, it can, it can make the game so much easier, right. As opposed to hitting a bad shot or hitting a slew of bad shots or playing bad for a month and having that emotional response, you know, saying I'm bad at golf. I can't fix this. What's going on. It's, yeah. it's getting to the point where, and I've said this before, like you can coach yourself. Like I, you know, I don't, I would like, and I mean this like genuinely like where you come out of maybe a year or two of working with me and you don't need me anymore. Right. And you can, cause I want you to be able to save money on coaching so you can go spend it on clubs and green fees. And, uh, and then, you know, you're going to tell a lot more people that way. Right. So it just works better even from a marketing standpoint. Right. So yeah, sure. if you can get to the point where you can coach yourself, I think that's, and maybe just do a, like a tune in session once, once a year, or at least, you know, the series of what we worked on is good for five to 10 years to me that until you're, you know, the body changes, because usually every decade, our body changes a little bit. Uh, that's, so that's awesome. Right. So I know you, this is, this questions might not be all that applicable to you just because you haven't played a lot. Um, and you see, you talked about this before the interview a little bit, but like your confidence levels, how is that translated to scoring? Cause I know you, you know, you don't play a lot just because of how busy you are, but have you felt yeah. a difference on the course? Yeah. You know what I have, it's, uh, I'd still say there's significant difference now um, that probably doesn't necessarily always translate to the score. However, like for sure off the tee, my confidence is way better now. Um, well, I'm starting to hit the, you know, the ball straighter longer and uh, yeah, there's just a few less things to have to worry about during my round. So that always goes a long way. Um, and, and you know what, my golfing partners, buddies have all noticed it as well. So, uh, they're not unfortunately giving me as many strokes. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that can be a downfall. And you know, what you said before the interview, I think is great is that you feel like more likely, like your, you know, your buddies aren't going to think you're an afterthought. Like you, they, you know, might invite you out to play more, which is great. I think it's golf is definitely, you know, one of those games where, you can feel like you're on the outs at times. Like I know I felt that before when I was a kid, I had no clue what was going on with my game. And my two brothers are excelling to this like NCAA division one level. Like my one brother probably could have made a D one team at the age of 16, but I'm sitting here barely being able to break 80. And a lot of that for me came from just not having answers. Like what, what the hell do I do to get better? Right. And it, it, it came to the point where working with a coach who really understood, you know, what's going on from a technical standpoint, you know, you, you can, the, the golf is a balance between mental and technical and, and the more you heal the technical, the mental starts to get better. And then you come in on the back end and heal the mental side of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to end off, uh, you know, there's a lot of in the mentorship, there's a lot of resources on short game and mental game. Is have any of those, um, have you dove into any of those and have they helped you out? Yeah. I mean, I think for the short game, um, I think we had one or two lessons earlier Mm -hmm. um and yeah I, I from what i recall it was there it was a short game lesson right before i was heading into a weekend golf excursion and 
yeah, like that couldn't have been come at a better time because uh, everything was just clicking. All the the couple of drills that you gave me and a lot of it was about having proper setup. Mm -hmm. uh, it really translated to uh, to lower scores. And well, I mean, we we're probably playing a scramble that weekend, but still, like I think my, more of my shots counted than not. So mm -hmm. that's uh, awesome. yeah, Love it, was, to hear it. it was awesome. Yeah. Well, one thing I've noticed about working with you and I appreciate this is you've been very diligent with your setup, right? Whether it's come to putting, chipping, full swing, uh, you know, it, that's one of the most common things that I see golfers are inconsistent with, right? Like we're a lot more consistent than we'd like to admit. We're just consistently inconsistent, right? So we're kind of, you know, consistently in the wrong spot with our swing. But from what I've seen from you and the coaching, anytime I give you those setup cues, you've really taken it to heart. And that's something that like growing up for me playing working with a guy who worked with more than 30 PJ tour players, like he wouldn't give me a lesson if I didn't have an alignment stick. Right. Like, it, you know, and I think that's the stuff that, you know, for anyone listening out there, like that's the glue that holds your swing together. Like the grip, the stance with the, the alignment, you know, how wide your stance is like the, just the core fundamentals, even tempo will throw it in there too, outside of the technical. And I think that's something that is missed on a lot of modern coaching because we're so we can map the swing so well now we see the 3d aspect of the swing you need to go at a guy like victor hovland like he doesn't get there with his swing unless his posture is rock solid you know so it that, that's something i've liked about what you've done is like there's always been that focus on making sure your setup is correct right yeah. whether you know it or not i've seen it at least <laughs> yeah it's i mean it just becomes second nature right like mm -hmm. it's something that it's more subconscious probably but uh, it's still there for sure. Cool. That's awesome, Ray. Well, Ray, thank you so much for spending the time today, buddy. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll, I'll link everything in the, in the bio there. And if, if anyone's looking to apply to the Academy, uh, you know, and kind of experience what Ray has gone through, definitely would uh, love to hear more about your journey. And uh, thanks so much.